I want to actually talk about something before we get into this. This is our first, our first actual, not basic tutorial level, or level, um, video. So, anyways. What I want to talk about is, there's an event going on. I would like to get this out of the way first. A new event going on is, if you have, I think, five medics surviving a white skull, a three white skull or higher, you will get, uh, and by the end of it, if there are five medics surviving, you will get a free health one. I guess this is sort to get health one, damage one, I, I don't know, because last event was all about damage one. But anyway, so make sure you start training those medics and do those higher ones. Next is new sneak peek just came out. Um, let's see what we can actually get on this. Ah, yes, new, it's a new command card called the uh, HQ Squad series. Now, I'm not. I, this is what they said. They said they're gonna be now. Uh, this is what I got the impression of when they said it. they're gonna be giving us two unlocked more two unlocked command card slots. So I'm not sure if they're adding two more slots on or what's going on with that. But they are. That's what they said in the their post. And everyone is getting one free command squad command card when this update comes it's I don't know if it's gonna be random or everyone's gonna get the same one but everyone is getting one so what this command card does is it won't be grunts or assaults that spawn out of your HQ maybe it'll be rangers uh, one three rangers six grunts one commando and one medic every 120 seconds that's how it's gonna work and I feel like this update is actually gonna change a lot of things Again, I don't think that this is going to be the biggest battle because, or not biggest battle, but the biggest update because daily rations really did change a lot of stuff. You being able to get gold and heroes a lot easier. I This one is going to be huge. I think this is going to be a close second, so everyone keep posted for that. Anyways. But, so what we got here is how to analyze your enemy. Um, it's actually pretty simple when you get down to the basics. So let's start off with the three white skulls and in honor of yeah in honor of the uh, the event let's get let's get right into this anyways so as you can see here he has four command cards which that's not a weakness so now and one of the command cards is a special support command card and it's the best in my opinion the best command card in the game so that means all of his defensive structures are going to have 10% more health and I would just like to clear this up with the confusion. People say that, I mean, because, uh, you know, MG Nets and Sniper Towers are defensive structures. That is true. But I mean that are in the defensive structures tab. These, anything in this tab does not get 10% of health. Anything in this tab does. Now you're going to be thinking, well, why is it the best command card if only your AA gun and walls get it? Think about that. You can make a killer funnel and killer barricades. It can, it is the best one. Anyways. So let's look right into this. Three tens, which I'm pretty sure is the max of tens. Um, six sniper towers, five MG nets. He has a pretty high base power, so they gotta be pretty upgraded. Three mortar cannons, but wait, what is this? Th no AA guns? That is a major flaw right there. You can learn to just them gives you the chance to bring in some missiles, some car bombs, paratroopers, anything aerial. That is a major flaw. You can decimate them easily from there. So make sure you bring in missiles and all that, because that, my friends, is one of the biggest flaws ever. And sorry, I forgot to turn off notifications, my bad, but that is a huge flaw. And now let's look at a little more into it. Okay. His perks look pretty good. Oh, his snipers have a level 5 on it. But what's this? What is it? This is another major flaw. These look like they're all, since he has three tents. Okay, I see a couple flaws here. So, first flaw, his grunts don't have any perks on. That's a smaller flaw, but it is a flaw. The next flaw is um, his his uh, colonel. He has an offensive perk on. Now, I get you want minimum wage and stuff, but that is not going to help him. That's a smaller flaw, but you can exploit that. That means he doesn't deal more damage. He doesn't have more fire rates. That is a flaw, and you can exploit that right away. His, now, another big flaw I'm seeing is that each, each, his two tents are filled with snipers and one's the colonel. Um, that being said, that means his troops are going to regenerate very slow. Now, I can see what he's trying to go for uh, here. 
He's trying to go for a larger scale warfare. Like he's trying to kill your men before your men even get there. Which will explain why he has one more sniper tower than an MG nest. We can infer that these are MG nests and sniper towers and the tents are upgraded and the mortar towers are upgraded a lot. But it does not mean you cannot win because the AA guns can give you the advantage here. But what I would recommend, because he does have some pretty high up perks, I would say for this one, bring a plague, a couple of aerial attacks, and maybe a unit health up. But honestly, this one, you can probably easily win. Ah, this one. Oh, I love how this battle's not never good. It's always like something outrageous, and these ones are always better. Anyways, let's go right into this one. Three tens, five. Oh, okay. All right, so this one's not too bad, but still, four command cards, no weakness there. He has a lower base power, but a lot of sniper towers, which really infers that his sniper towers are upgraded, but they're not upgraded a lot. It, or all, all of his buildings really aren't that upgraded. However, he lacks an MG nest, which you can use to your advantage, which would mean using more farther away and uh, guys, such as snipers, sharpshooters, uh, any guy with a grenade launcher, the rocketeer, I think. Any guy that like that. He also only has two more towers, which really isn't a weakness. I mean, more towers really don't factor into this unless he has none. But he has one AA gun, which means that AA gun cannot be covering three tents, five sniper towers, and three bunkers. That means that a lot of his base is exposed, and that is a weakness we can use to exploit it. So, we can tell by his base power it's not a very upgraded base. We can tell by his buildings that he prefers uh, sniper towers or MG nests. And we can see that we can easily get him via aerial assault. Now let's go a little more into this. All right, beauty chest. All right, here we go. We're already seeing a couple of weaknesses. Uh, all right, so assault doesn't have any perks and the one perk he does is an offensive perk. So that is not good. That is not good at all. Um, the engineer also has steady on. Now, personally, steady's not offensive, but the, I mean, if you're getting shot at, you're pretty much dead as it is. Anyways, the command cards you have on seem pretty legit. Nothing too bad. You can easily overwhelm them. Um, but yeah, be careful about that one. Um, so this one, I would say maybe uh, aerial assault. You may want to bring a few pair or a uh, pair of troopers. Definitely a. Uh, Influenza, best, um, plague maybe, not plague, uh, not plague, uh, unit damage increase, that maybe what I would give you. Um, another weakness is that he is, it looks like, how many tens is he? I can't really clarify, but I think this means that, yeah, I would, because his grunts actually have perks on when his assaults really don't. So this would mean, this is another thing you can use for in context. He didn't just put a, the a, unstoppable on the gr assault just for he, well yeah he, did, he must have wanted to do a mission or something and just use them instead I don't know but you can tell that the assaults are the ones not coming out of the tent why because they don't have any perks on you wouldn't put the perks on the grunt so you can tell that the three units coming out of the three tents are the engineer the grunt and the grenade launcher you can tell this and you can tell the assaults the one coming out of the HQ. It's not the grunt. Well, I mean, the, they both come out, but you can tell that he's not a tent. So that's something. All right, let's go to the next one, and uh, hopefully, okay. All right. Are we seeing a few, uh, few? Uh... Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> I'm seeing a few weaknesses. One that's not really a weakness, though, is that he only has three command cards. That's not really a weakness. However, that is towards your advantage, because not everyone has four command cards. I mean, that's not a weakness. However, it does work towards your advantage. He's a base power of 6,000, which that means you can tell that he has about some stuff fairly upgraded. So, be careful there. He uh, has more sniper towers than MG nests, and he uses a sniper, which means, again, he's trying to keep you away from him. So, that being said, you may want to bring more long-distance enemy or guys instead units. Um, sharpshooters, snipers, all of those will work. Uh, you know, Rocketeers. I think Heavy Gunners can get some major distance if you put the right perks on, but any of those that can have good distance, you may want to bring. So, a lot of health and a lot of distance. Anyways, next, he has one AA gun, but that base looks big and powerful. So, that means one AA gun cannot cover a whole base. That being said, aerial support. Use that to your advantage. Alright, let's, uh, view details. Oh, 
trying to look for a uh... well I would honestly say his units look pretty all is freed except for a few steadies on him I don't know why you would use steady but he wanted to use steady why not because that is both offensive and defensive however if you're being shot and you're a sniper and you need steady on the fact that you're being shot pretty much just says you're pretty much dead I I'm sorry maybe the assaults I can understand because they're the one at the front line but I can't understand the sniper and, but uh, one thing I'm definitely seeing is that his mercenaries and his uh, snipers are both in his tents. So that being said, that means his tents are going to be slower than usual. So we can use your aerial support to get your paratroopers in back there, providing that the AA gun's not by the tents. But there's three tents, so it's doubtful they're covering all three in every angle. So anyways, you can easily get your uh, par a couple paratroopers in there and defeat his tents right from behind him. So that is a flaw. And now let's go into this. Alright, 6,600. Uh, we can definitely tell his stuff is upgraded a lot. We can uh, tell that he buys, or not buys gold, but sorry. Uh, because I forgot daily rations update. But anyways, you can tell he uses gold to customize his base. So either that he buys it or he's waited a long time to earn it. So your pick. And it looks like that color is Special Ops Black. But I can't be sure. I mean, I think that is. But if it is, that means he bought the Special Forces bundle, like me. So you may want to be careful. That means he may have actually bought gold. And he may have access to units that you may, you know, more powerful, more perks. Let's just go into this. His base is pretty powerful, which means he has upgrade stuff. Oh my god. Okay. Tents are normal. Sniper Tower 7. But 3 MG nests? That is a weakness, people. As much as sniper towers are good, you want a balanced variety of each one. You do, that is a major weakness. You can you gotta bring in, and he has a sniper on, so that means guess what? War long distance warfare. You're gonna want to bring people that have good range on on this battle. He is because his MG nest. When if you're on front, but they'll kill you before you can even get there. But the MG nests, those are useless. Deemed useless right now. And, I don't know, okay, five AA guns. One mortar tower, that seems a little bit of a weak point because that means only one area is going to be influenced by its mortar tower. Which is actually works more in your favor. So, uh, now five AA guns. Now, th that's just an excessive amount, I'm sorry. That That is way too much, but I can see he's trying, that means that his airspace is completely covered. My guess is he has them by his MG nest, his tents, but, you know, sniper tower. That, he has problems by everything. So, air support will be no good here. You're going to definitely want to bring unit health up. Probably influenza on this one. Um, maybe even a plague. I mean, plague, berserk. Honestly, I, this one looks pretty, uh, it has weak points, but, I mean, base-wise, I mean, those sniper towers will kill you, so... You gotta be careful when you're dealing with someone that has an excessive amount of sniper towers because they can one shot you and if they're upgrade enough with three snipers in, it's it's just awful. You can't even get close. So use that to your defense. Now I'm looking at the command cards. He has four com or and cards, which isn't yeah. He has one that's a general contractor, which means he probably has walls up and his AA guns are probably gonna be extremely tough to destroy. So he probably has walls up, and knowing that, it's probably citadel walls, those big ones with the, yeah. And then he has, I don't know how you get this unlucky with sharpshooter after sharpshooter after sharpshooter. I, I don't even know, I'm not sure if that's luck or just not luck. The fact that one of those wasn't the actual sharpshooter himself really concerns me. But anyway, now something may have told me this guy does buy DLC currency. Now, I'm just saying because he does have some stuff upgrade, uh, you know, customized on his banner, which honestly doesn't mean anything. You get gold from battles and daily rations. Alright, but the odds are that he got three sharpshooters without buying a bunch of car packs. Kind of concerns me, and he does special ops black, which means he has spent money on this game. So who's to say that he w didn't spend, you know, money on DLC currency? Alright, let's view the details. Oh my god! I would honestly say this kid has definitely bought DLC currency. Oh my god, he has bought DLC currency, no doubt about it. Oh my. 
Now, we can definitely infer that he has bought DLC currency. Why? Because all of his perks, except one for some reason, are level 5. You wanna know how I know this? I'm a higher base power than him, and I only one of my guy has one level 5 perk. So, we can definitely infer that this guy is overpowered and you will probably not beat him. Now, you're going to want to bring every attack card possible if you actually are kind of dumb enough to try and attack someone like this. You're going to want to bring Berserk, Plague, you name it, everything. Berserk, Plague, uh, unit health up, unit damage up, <laughs> yeah, you're probably still going to lose to be 100% honest. So, uh, honestly, just, just don't. I mean, he's, yeah, he's overpowered. He is really overpowered. Wow. I, I, I would not do that. So, just don't, I guess. Anyway. That's pretty much it. Yeah, always make sure to check for that. If you see someone with a banner customized, the special ops black eye, an unusual helmet, um, and then they have overpowered per, and they have a lot of the same command cards, such as this, and they have general contractors in general. But then one you see they have all the same perks, and now I would have said maybe if they were like steady accuracy, but they're literally all the exact same perks. You literally must have spent like five billion dollars on this game or something. But anyway, well that's pretty much it. I, I've tried, I've, you know, I hope I taught you how to analyze an enemy. But anyway, uh, remember I told you about the special event, more of that. But anyways. That should be, yeah, I mean, hopefully you can learn now how to somewhat analyze an enemy. Guns up veteran, over and out.